going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today we're going to be taking a look at some new arrivals primarily at DLT Trading but we're also going to take a look at Kunwu as well. Uh, I will link these pages right down in the description so that you guys can check them out if you want to. You don't have to sit here and listen to my voice and look at my face. That's perfectly fine. But if you want to hang out, I'm going to give you guys my commentary on some new stuff that's pretty interesting. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me and please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. So, uh, first of all, the S Tau 2, which I unboxed, I guess, two days ago, your guys' time when you're seeing this. Uh, this is an absolutely incredible knife and somebody pointed out to me, they said, you undersold the fact that all of the hardware is DLC coded on the DLC versions. Both versions are awesome and they make left-handed versions if you didn't know. These are Vanax, Contour Titanium, absolutely beautiful execution. Um, ambidextrous mounting uh, positions for the pocket clip, whichever way you go for the frame lock. Um, but uh, I just I really wanted to touch on these again because this is probably Kunwu's most ambitious knife. I have it here. Uh, it is wonderful. If you want a closer look at it, I would suggest you take a look at that upload. But if you're looking at that price tag and thinking that's r really high compared to some of their other stuff, this is an evolution compared to some of their stuff that's around the $250 territory. Um, but they still have Padres in Diamond Tie. Uh, they have the uh, X Padre in the stonewashed uh, finish and just a ton of stuff. Like the Kunwu website has some absolutely wonderful stuff sitting there. A lot of stuff is sold out, but uh, there's almost certainly something here for everybody. If you've not taken a look at Kunwu, this is definitely worth a look right now. I have a feeling, especially these S Tau 2s, as soon as they sell out, people are gonna start complaining like, why, I just found out about this knife, why isn't it available? Um, this is an exceptional knife, absolutely. I wouldn't flinch too hard at that price tag, uh, but my review's coming up, so we'll cover that. Uh, let's go ahead and move into DLT trading because a ton of stuff landed there in just the last few days, and it's definitely worth talking about. Um, first off, a ton of Protex. Now they have some of these custom and crazy ones, and that's great if you're looking for a custom crazy one. I figured that bronze Mordax would sell I posted it uh, in the community tab and I said, there's a freaking bronze Mordax there uh, with a black Magna Cut blade. And I, I knew that somebody would pick that up. Um, but uh, they also have runts in various configurations. They have the CQC7 Auto, which I feel like I haven't seen in a while. That's a 20 CV blade. Now, personally, I don't love Emerson uh, folding knives, but when they are translated into a Protec automatic, I think they're pretty cool, especially with a 20 CV blade, American made auto at 225 bucks. This is a fantastic EDC size switch blade at 7.8 inches. Uh, that's just about perfect. You have that extended jimping, really classic drop point blade, just good ergos, it's just a good knife. Uh, the TR3, that's probably uh, Protec's most flagship model. I own this knife almost exactly, and it is absolutely wonderful. I think these are Magna Cut. Now, uh, now, yeah, was the downward inflection uh, that I meant to apply to that word. <laughs> uh, I get to talking too fast. Okay, Protec TR3, Blackfish Scale Handle, Magna Cut Blade, definitely cool. Protec Godfather, what are they doing these now uh, for steel? 154 CM, not bad. I bet you anything they eventually... Uh, move those too. That's got texturing on it. I bet you they move those to 20 CV or Magna Cut. Uh, no surprise that the Oligarch is gone. Uh, that's a super cool knife for sure. The Sinkovich, I believe. Yeah. Small Sabenza 31. Medford Infraction. I haven't seen that knife forever. Not that it's all that interesting. I never actually reviewed that knife. I just didn't, it just didn't look very cool to me. There are Glycons hanging out here. There are Cypher 2s hanging out here. Different colors of Combat Troodon. I'm glad that these are available. The new Combat Troodon is is definitely awesome. Uh, Manta, Manticore S, I'm not really interested in that size. It's the E, is the E the medium sized one? That's, that's the one that I like. Jack Wolf Knives, uh, everybody seems to like these. Um, so July 12th is when they drop, if you're uh, looking for that. Uh, we have, what is this? Holy moly, red camo, <laughs> jeez. Red camo UTX-85, that's the first one of those I've ever seen uh, with this. 
Uh, we have the MSI in uh, like a Coyote G10 in OD green. Um, I, I would, if you, you know, if you like these colors of G10, pick it up. But if you know that you're going to customize it, just get the one with the injection mold plastic scales because you're going to pull them off and you'll pay, what is it? Like set, what are the, the injection mold plastic ones? They're quite a bit less. I always forget exactly how much they are. Um, but yeah, that, that would be my suggestion there. Microtech, Combat Troodon, Two-Tone. Yeah, these Exos. These are wild and they came out of nowhere. Like absolutely out of nowhere. So these, like this in particular, this is a double-edged bayonet, which is actually pretty cool. Two-tone with a titanium inlay, and then you have a black titanium frame. I'm not upset at that price tag. I think this is probably one of the coolest configurations that I've seen this knife in. LMAX, fine steel for, uh, for this knife. I have one of these. I think mine is in 3V, but it's not nearly as cool. This one is quite a bit cooler. Um, you know what else I'm realizing? No, that can't be right. Is this right? This is the big one. Oh, I thought it was the meat. It's not the XOM. This is the large one. This guy is 8.75 inches. Holy crap. Okay. Yeah, that's the size of my um, original that came from Crane's Cutlery. That, that huge one that has... Um, that has the uh, the Zerkatai inlays. Uh, this whole time, I literally thought these were the M's. Uh, that was the one. Uh, that these are the size of that one. And the only issue with that one is that, like, my I have one of the originals that does not have a lock on it. So this is now a full size variation with a lock. That's extremely cool. I think once people figure that out, these will go a lot faster. Um, and they are absolutely worth the money being Riot built at 300 bucks. I think that's honestly a steal. Some of these are micarta. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, that doesn't look great <laughs> to me. If, you, if you're just like, oh, I love brown micarta, then yeah, go for it. I think if you're going to do that, I think these look a little bit better, right? But I mean, at 295 bucks for, for any, uh, yeah, I would get the flame titanium. I'm going to tell you right now, the one that I would go for which I'm honestly tempted, like right here now in the moment, is this guy right here because it's a double edge. Uh, that's probably, at 295 I think that's pretty cool. Uh, hopefully they release those in more configurations. What on earth is this? This is a green chupacabra with an orange, um, with an orange stud. Interesting. I also didn't realize that their aluminum was 7075. That's kind of interesting. 61, 62. Okay, I feel like... Is that lower than what they had done on previous ones? My issue is, is that I don't really trust this lock that they've done on this knife. I, it's not my favorite thing in the whole world. Uh, this is the new um, Kershaw Launch 16, which just landed here with me today, and it looks awesome. The raw aluminum and the gray coating on the blade. This is probably my favorite version of the Launch 16. The Launch 16 is, in my opinion, the best Launch Series knife that they have ever done. And it's also a ridiculously good value being American made and in CPM M4 for $159. It's confusing to me how Kershaw manages to do that. Uh, that is, in 2024, that is a silly good deal. Not just for an American made knife. That's a good deal for a pocket knife, period, right? Even if you want to throw in like, but so-and-so makes this from China and it even, even still, I would make an argument here for the uh, Launch 16, I'd say, <laughs> dollar for dollar, that's a pretty awesome knife if you can carry autos. Still two XM24s sitting there. Uh, I think a lot of people are like, you know, hinders aren't selling as well because, of the, uh, <laughs> because this or that, or they're not as popular. Yeah, the ones that always hang out, like, I mean, I can tell you for years and years and years, the Battle Blue. Uh, is almost always a variation of uh, XMs that seem to hang out. And what do you know? Battle Blue. I don't know why. That just is what it is, you know? Um, there's probably a couple others hanging out if we go back far enough. But that's usually the case. Still, though, if you want an XM24 and you don't mind blue, pick that up. Because eventually it'll go. Um, I think the reason that we see a lot more of the expensive knives hanging around is not because of a decrease in popularity, 
um, or that they're like more expensive. A lot of people are, you know, freak out when they see hinder or price tags. Hey, if you're new and you're seeing this price tag and you're like pooping your pants over it, uh, there's a huge difference between hinderer knives and like Kershaw knives when we're talking about made in America. Number two, that's been the same price of an XM24 for probably 10 years. That's not like a recent price bump. Somebody the other day was like, you know, talking about in the context of the XM24 uh, price tag, they were like, you know, knife prices are really getting crazy, just parroting the same thing, except for the price tag on the XM24 has not changed. It's It's been the same. Uh, but that is uh, a totally different tier of knife, right? That's a fully in-house USA, you could call it ultra high-end production or mid-tech, and it is 100% substantially more expensive to make than your average uh, USA production knife. Um, but it is a lot of money. I mean, it's $200 more than the 3.5, mm, almost $175 more than, than the 3.5. And it's gigantic, right? Uh, but anyways, anyways, uh, Medford's no surprise. Those are sitting there, left-handed T's and uh, S45VN. I'm glad they make left-handed models, but uh, attention to detail. That's that. Um, is it just called the MK3? It's actually kind of an interesting looking knife um, since it's a bar lock, right? I wasn't super excited about their frame locks, but um, maybe their bar lock's better. I don't know about you guys, but I have always been, um, I remember being in, I think it was college. I had a roommate that had this knife or something extremely similar. And I was obsessed with this knife. I would always ask him, I was like, do you have that CRKT? And he would either have it in his pocket or he'd have it in his room. And I would just play with it. <laughs> I loved this knife so much, man. It's a cool knife. Uh, 18R, 14 MOV is nothing special, but I mean, hey, it's 40 bucks, you know? Is this the big one? No, this is the small one. There's like a giant one. It wasn't this one. It, there's like a, a much, much larger one that's like over nine inches. I love that knife. Uh, let's see here. Not really interested in the line steels. There's a, an amphibian with the fluted aluminum sitting there. Scarab 2 partially serrated sitting there. Uh, or, sorry, Scarab 2 Gen 3. Um, we still have the compact chads in DLC. If you don't want to order these directly off the Kumu website because it takes a while, um, the compact chad in PM60 for $259 uh, dollars direct from uh, DLT trading is 100% worth it, 100% uh, worth it. This is an excellent knife. Comes with two pocket clips, extra omega springs, actual DLC on the blade, and PM60 is pretty gnarly stuff. I think they get that up there to about 66, 67 Rockwell, uh, pretty cool. I think we're actually getting to a point on this list where we have seen these other things. The Cobalt Military 2, that's available, huh? I didn't realize that that was. That's kind of neat. Spy 27 uh, Military 2, I said PM2, Military 2. So that's got the compression lock. Essentially a giant PM2 in Spy 27, um, AKA Spyderco S45VN, roughly, roughly. See, people see this and they go, Spy 27 is VG10, because it's based on VG10. No, that's what they started with. That's kind of what they started with and then evolved it dramatically uh, from there. So the end result is much closer, not identical, but much closer to S45VN. Um, we have DLT trading exclusive 3.5 inch titanium scales with a warthog, uh, a whole bunch of RGT scales. Another, I'm near, yeah, I thought that was aluminum. Wait, is it? No, it's G10. Okay. I think, I want to get to the restocks but I want to make sure that I'm not missing anything here. Um, these are amazing. Um, that is super cool. Is that freaking Zerkatai? Uh, Black Time Ascus. Okay, yeah. This is I insanely cool. Um, <laughs> wow, that's an awesome version of that knife. Does that have a Zirconium pocket clip too? God, S90V. Okay, so this is um, absolutely what you would call a semi-custom not a production knife and something that's absolutely made in the United States. I remember the, when the original Wayfarer came out, um, but uh, this is an absolutely gorgeous piece. They haven't been popular for a bit. People don't really talk about these anymore. 
but Olamic makes really, really awesome knives. Eight inches, three and a half inch blade, S90V, uh, beautiful titanium, awesome materials. Um, that's a really, really cool knife. Now I have not handled the 247 uh, since probably 2019 or so, maybe 2018. Uh, I would hope and venture to guess that the action has been upgraded. And the reason I say that is because the whippersnapper had noticeably better action than previous models. So I have to assume if the whippersnapper was updated, eventually these were as well. Um, but I don't know that for sure. It would be interesting to hear from somebody who has purchased one of those um, recently, uh, somebody who could uh, clarify or shed some light on that, I guess. Uh, still a regular Scarab 2 Gen 3 sitting there in the stonewashed blade. Kind of surprised. That's that's the one that I would pick up, that or a double edge. Um, I think we're getting back into the stuff that I covered last time. So the other thing that I wanted to do today is I wanted to do the drops page just to see if there's something that I need to be aware of. No, okay. Um, but something that we did not see that I brought up in the um, community tab. Yeah, the T1000 V2s. Um, let's talk about this. So there are going to be some interesting versions of this available. Uh, these have zirconium accents. Um, this is uh, this is pretty cool. I um, I am absolutely going to pick one of these up uh, for myself. Uh, DLT is not giving me a free one. I'm going to pay for it full price. Uh, but these are reup produced, absolutely gargantuan hunks of craziness. Blade hardness 61 to 62 on the M390, fantastic. Uh, but that's nearly a quarter inch thick slab of M390. These also have what I refer to as the Frankenstein lock. It's not actually what it's called. Uh, do they say with a long life strength rod, blah, 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 standout edition of the bump. You got to put something in there about the locking system. It has those double extra pin locks and it has that spring loaded thing on the back that disengages them. That's really cool. Um, so they will have a, zir a zirconium version. Um, they'll have um, just blasted titanium accents if you want the Terminator look. Um, but I mean, at that price, I would go with the zirconium. They will have... Um, Zirkatai accents for, I mean, let's be honest, way too much more. But that is cool. This is what mine looks like. Uh, so once these release, mine will no longer be all that special. But these have huge accents, even across the backspacer, that pocket clip. Um, those are actually, that that price increase for uh, for all of that Zirkatai, that's not really um, as big of a deal. But hey, if you don't want all that stuff, then don't do it. Here's what I think is the most interesting. This is the version that I'm going to buy. This is a full DLC version of it. And this one in particular has crystallized black uh, DLC titanium. So here, React 1000 V2 Satin DLC M390 Black DLC Titanium Crystal Black DLC Titanium Accents. What? Oh my gosh, I am definitely, I cannot wait for this. This is the one that I'm going to get. I will happily, happily pay $590 for this. That is so cool. I cannot wait. If you don't care about the crystal tie, you can get the plain black one, right? Um, I absolutely love this. I have no idea when they're dropping. They aren't even listed under the um, like coming soon page anymore. So who knows when these are going to be here. But And it says out of stock. It's not. It's coming soon, right? Don't go to this page and say they're out of stock. It says coming soon. It's just a default. Out of stock is just a default. It's probably how they get these to be sorted into a different page on their on their site. Or for some reason, they didn't want them showing up on new arrivals, right? Because they're, they're not. They have not arrived. They're coming. So that's why that says that. Um, but also, coming soon. Yeah, here we go. That's why they did that. They want it in the coming soon page. Lion Steel, not interested, not interested. Some Hogs, really glad that they added this page. Spartan Harzi folder in Magnica, those are the large ones. It looks like they've got some newer uh, variations coming. Uh, Benchmade Mini Claymore, some Buck stuff, right? Okay, I actually just want to look at the Restocks page, but I'm, I'm glad, I've, I've said this a few times now, I'm really glad that uh, they added that. So Restocks right here, 
You guys need a tab up here, DLT, that says restocks. Because you have to go back to the front page. Maybe I'm just missing it. Kershaw Livewire Magna Cut Stonewash Blade with the raw aluminum. Uh, launch 6. Combat Troton Standard. Microtech uh, MSI with the Fluted G10. Benchmade 710. Man, this is so cool. Uh, and I would buy this. I think I would legitimately buy this at 300 bucks. It's just just like everything else that Benchmade's doing right now. It's like a hundred bucks over the line, or in some cases, it's their knives are two hundred over the line. Um, it is it's so cool, and this is such a classic. Um, you know, the seven ten is such like a classic Benchmade knife. It, it's it's legitimately extremely cool, but it's just aluminum. You know, now if this was in tie, I'd consider it. I'd consider it. Um, but it's not. It's FD aluminum, and then you're going to have steel liners. And, you know, yeah, okay, uh, uh, S90V, like, that's cool. Um, but I just can't, I can't do it. This is not a Hinderer XM18 or um, a Demco. Like, they're, these are not made exactly the same way. They're really nice, but they're not, they're not in that territory. They're not in that... Um, where the ultra high end USA production stuff meets the small batch mid tech stuff like that's if you're at 400 bucks like that's the territory you're in so i always forget that these like look at this ZT zero tolerance right <laughs> this is a 9.13 inch knife this is a huge knife right in magna cut blue carbon fiber and then they don't have another side of it but the other side is titanium three hundred and four dollars so it's not like benchmade has to answer but it's like here's <laughs> the zt knives are not like made in a way that's like not as nice right a lot of people would say the zt knives are made nicer um so ye. uh microtech ramlock stitch fluted black handle that's the exact one that I have. This is an awesome one, 300 bucks. If you don't have one of those yet, you should definitely check them out. Here's the less expensive ones, 190 bucks, right? Microtech, making substantially less expensive and more impressive knives. What a crazy year, wow, that's just nuts. Um, yeah, and then this black fluted G10. So they've got the G10 one and the aluminum one. I would recommend the aluminum one, it just feels a little bit better. Cool, cool stuff in the uh, restocks tab for sure. This video has become very long. I think that's gonna be pretty much it. Make sure that you guys uh, check everything out um, because there's lots of cool stuff and I would venture to guess as the summer progresses and we transition into pre-fall, uh, knives are gonna get substantially more interesting on retail sites. The summer seems to usually be the most boring time um, but it's nice to see some interesting things trickle in, some surprises, right? Um, but uh, like I said, I will link these pages down in the description. That's going to be pretty much it for me today. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody. And have a great day.